everybody and welcome to another episode of Back Chat. I'm Amy and this is my wonderful fiance Maggie and together we are Think Athema and this series is all about spending money, let's be honest. <laughs> and me trying to be a rational voice <laughs> And Maggie reason. trying to be a rational voice you know, of reason. Do we really need this? Do but we? mostly just us justifying all of the purchases that we're making across a range of different um, crowdfunding websites, yeah. so GameFound and Kickstarter, just ways to spend money. And in this series, we go through our top 10 from the last fortnight or the last two weeks of mm-hmm. campaigns. And we present those back to you in a top 10 list every fortnight and try and explain or rationalize why we're backing them or not backing them. Yeah. Um, we introduced last time a little stamp mm-hmm. that you'll see appear and people are like, what is the stamp? Because we just added it post-production. Yeah. Yeah. The stamp um, is just showing you what we actually have backed. Yes. And that doesn't mean we won't back something. It just means that we're probably still thinking about it mm. if we haven't backed it yeah. yet. Otherwise, we'll explain um, all of that. The other thing is that you will see next to the subscribe button. Oh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you have, you'll also see um, a join button next to the subscribe button. And that uh, that will allow you to hear more about our channel membership. So a little video will pop up and tell you a bit about that. But the reason why I'm bringing that up now is, first of all, it's the um, only way that we support our channel. We don't take money from publishers. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is that we are going to start doing an extended edit of this video just to talk through the games that fell outside of the top 10. So if you're interested to check that out or if you want to support the channel, um, please have a look at that little video. Anyway, without further ado, Mm. I think we should get on with our ranking. All right. Um, So number 10 this week just snuck in there. Just yes, it really did. Number Um, 10 is Flick Fleet. Flick Fleet. Yeah. Now, Flick Fleet is a dexterity game. It's not really the kind... Like, I'm not big on dexterity games, usually. I don't know how... Yeah, you, we don't, we don't have actually that have that many. many. No. I think you're more into them than I am. Uh, yeah, I'll entertain them. Yeah. Um, but this one looked quite... You know, it, it, to me, it looks actually quite thematic because that, that's the other thing with a lot of <laughs> with a lot of um, uh, dexterity games that tend to be fairly abstract and it's just kind of like hmm. score a point and that's it but um, this one it has a space theme which again is not like the thing that you know the weight of my heart but mm-hmm. it, it's still it looks like of all the dexterity games it looks like the one that I would probably find the most engaging um, yeah. so I'd be very yeah I'd be keen to try and, and this check is, it out um, this is the second time that they've been on Kickstarter mm-hmm. and I believe they were met with like quite a positive reception mm-hmm. so that put it up in my mind you know, this is a tried and tested game. If you want to check out reviews, you know, they're all available. I love that yeah. when it's kind of a reprint of a well-loved game. Mm. Um, so for that reason, I was kind of really intrigued to check it out. The theme, I know, I know, not the th- not the theme or in the relationship, <laughs> but anything space themed is immediately like a little, yeah, lower our in our ranking. So that's probably mm. what's pushed it down into number 10. Mm. But if you like dexterity games, um, probably check that one out. Mm-hmm. And that's our number 10 flick fleet. Now, for our number nine, it's actually two games in one campaign. It's Crossroll Hong Kong and Animal Inc. That's been super popular lately. Yes. Putting two games into a single campaign. I know Jamie um, Stagmeyer of Stonemeyer Games wrote a blog about it this mm. week, actually. It's about why are all these companies doing this? Um, I, as an Australian, really appreciate when it's a small box game combining multiples because it means that we sh- we save on shipping because yeah. shipping is so expensive just to get one small box game. So by the time you add shipping, you're paying $50 for a small box game yeah. and that's like quite prohibitive. Mm. But <laughs> you did it. Maggie's laughing because I can't say that word very well. She struggles with the word prohibitive. Prohib- well done. Prohib- Don't make me say it again. I am proud of you. That was amazing. That was um, seamless. I think though, if it's a bigger game, it can dilute sometimes away yeah, from the offer. I feel offer. like if it's if it's too big box game, yeah. I kind of then it just kind of becomes confusing. It and does, it, yeah. And it makes me feel like maybe you didn't put enough thought or effort into either, into either of, of the them. games. Yeah, I agree with that. So, but yeah, I can see for small box games, it makes sense. Yeah. Particularly from the shipping point of view. It's yes, like just definitely from the shipping. Bundle. Yeah. And it's kind of fun when you open a, like a delivery, you've got all these games in there instead of just one. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so Cross Roll Hong Kong, um, it was on Kickstarter before and I didn't back it. I think I was having one of those like, let's try and spend less money weeks. Boring. <laughs> um, so Sensible. Sensible and boring. Um, I didn't back it last time. Since then, we've played a little game called Metro X, mm-hmm. which we'll probably talk about on Small Talk at some point. Yep. But the games are very similar. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. So we played um, Metroid's another roll and write, but there's quite a nice little, very easy to, to learn and pick up, but it's quite a, like nice little tension um, between um, the the numbers and the colors and blocking yourself as you're trying to, to kind mm. of be the first to finish one of the Metro lines. Yeah. I just really, really enjoyed it. It's just one Are of those Are we wrong... reviewing uh, Metro X? Because I know. Sorry. I think we're talking about cross Yeah, Kong. But this is very similar. So that's why it's relevant. So then you were saying that even, even, um, uh, like even the campaign actually like mentions it does mention reference it, which I, I love that you know when they're just recognizing what everybody's thinking is that you know is this very similar to Metro X yeah. they say it's a simpler version of Metro X but we found Metro X quite simple so that you know, or more streamlined and mm, I, I had yeah. no problem with Metro X. I really yeah. enjoyed it too. So um, probably less interested in that, but I am actually quite interested in Animal Inc. Okay. Um, because it's a, it's quite abstract. So you might yeah. not feel the same way. I like the, um, the illustrations or the artwork. Uh, yeah. sort of appealing. To because me. I, my understanding is there's like five suits um, of different mm-hmm. colors, but they all are illustrated with a different animal. Mm. And then those suits have different values within the deck of that suit. Right. So it's, um, it becomes a bit of a hand management game because it's semi-cooperative, which is the interesting thing to me. I've actually come out, like, we don't like cooperative games, mm-hmm. but I'm kind of starting to come around with this semi-cooperative idea where ultimately you still get a winner. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you've kind of got to work together a little bit. I, I enjoy that tension. And yeah. um, this game where you're building out a pyramid, it's either that one person wins, I think the last person in the turn order, or everybody else. Right. And it's something to do with whether you can construct five cards across the bottom of the pyramid. So I don't know. It just sounds really interesting, you know, working through that puzzle, but also with the decks, deck of cards or yeah. the cards that you have in your hand. So I'm intrigued by that. I haven't, we haven't yet backed it. No. Um, I, I probably will look at it again for Animal Inc. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's our number nine, Cross Roll Hong Kong and Animal Inc. And our number eight is a little card game called Prosperity. T, like tea prosperity you see what they did there yeah yeah see what they did there yeah yeah so in prosperity we all play um what is it they call it like it's like um independent tea shops like you're kind of crafting your own tea with the different leaves and different um to to make yeah craft craft tea Mm -hmm. mixes the one thing that like i that's a like as a theme i love that and i love teas Mm -hmm. and i love learning as well about all the different types of leaves that would go into a tea yeah the artwork's quite pretty the artwork i love the box art i have to say the box art i really really love yeah my only hesitation with it is that it's a three is it three to six players yeah and that's because one of the core mechanics is negotiation Mm. so obviously you need more people to be able to swap and negotiate by like swapping and as a mechanic i don't love that Mm -hmm. like i don't love having to swap and trade mostly because i get embargoes placed on me where no one will (laughs) trade with me um (laughs) to, to the opposite of Queen mm. making. Yeah, whatever the opposite <laughs> of that is. It's yeah. like anti queen making. Anti queen yeah. making, yeah. Yeah, queen destroying. People gang up on me. Like queen destroying. Yeah. Um yes. So I think my concern with that is I I would see myself playing that either solo or two player. I don't really see it coming out on the table that often mm. at a three plus player count. Yeah. So that's my main hesitation with it, even though I really love the um, theme. attracted to the theme. Yeah. yeah. And it is like set collection or it's kinda of like order fulfillment, but yes. you need the right teas to mm-hmm. fulfill those orders yeah. um yeah it looks a little too light for my personal taste so mm-hmm. we haven't backed this as of yet yeah. um but it, yeah it does if you are looking for a lighter game and you love tea i could see why you, you have would, th- you can have three plus players and you like negotiating then yeah because you should check this one out yeah um so, so, that's, so that's our number eight yeah. um prosperity now our number seven is sephirot i think that's how you pronounce it sephirot sephirot hmm. Sephiro? Oh, it could be Sephiro, yeah. Sephiro, maybe the T's silent? Not sure. Who knows? Uh, this game is interesting because this is essentially, this is another topic that's sort of happening. It's like tarot crazy. Like there's, there's so many campaigns that are like tarot card inspired or tarot deck inspired. This is very much a tarot deck and you are using it. It, it seems oh, to me like Oh, maybe that's why the T is silent because like tarot. Maybe it's like Sephiro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it means. Anyways, so I think um, to me, it seems like this is a gamification of the divination side of of tarot reading. So I'm I'm intrigued by that because I do I love 
that sort of area of as you know like i'm always into transcendence and mm-hmm. the occult not not so much the occult but i do like sort of mysticism and things like that i don't actually i've never delved into tarot tarot sounds like puro pu- i don't even know what i'm saying but i've never delved into that area so i don't know much about it i don't really mm-hmm. know how all of that works um but it's sort of like it this seems like an interesting introduction to it yeah and the artwork is beautiful the artwork like, is stunning yeah. and they, they do they do really um kind of promote the the artists yep. which they should because the artistry is incredible yeah. in the illustrations the other thing is the way the table presence of it makes me feel like and they even mentioned it, it's like it's got this sort of meditative uh, experience or mindfulness experience you can play it one to i believe it's one to two players so you can mm-hmm. play it i think you can play it solo you can mm-hmm. play it cooperative and you can play competitive competitive. yeah um so i yeah so i'm I'm mostly intrigued by that yeah and there was like quite a big gap between our scores like you would have seen on the screen five Mm -hmm. for me and eight for maggie so it was definitely the theme that's pulling us in um mechanically i mean this is the designer's first um board game Mm -hmm. so um you know i always kind of think about that but also like uh, you know trying to bring some coming from a different world into board gaming is always interesting to me, but um, it tends to be lighter style games that do that. And um, it does look like kind of basic set collection, but what intrigues me is that the core deck is actually a full tarot deck. Mm -hmm. And so just getting to play and Mm. learn about those cards, um, I think will be really interesting. Mm. Um, And just like how they then work that into the mechanics I'm kind of intrigued about. I think at the moment, the main hesitation is also the price. Like it's it for mm, yes. us an Australian like trying to ship that in. Yes, it was quite in euro. Yes, yeah. it is quite yeah, expensive. It's tricky. It is quite expensive. But, I said to Maggie, "Are you sure?" And she was like, "Yes." So <laughs> that has been backed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that is our number seven, Sephiro. Mm. I believe it's Sephiro. called Sephiro. Let's go with that. It's like Fiero. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't end in T. Um, all right, our number six is Solani. It's actually another two games, two in, in one, one campaign. Solani and the other game is The Girl Who Made the Stars. Yeah. And I, I want to say, first of all, that when we saw this campaign, I first thought when you see something that is like really intrinsically tied to um, a group's like mythology mm-hmm. or um, or spirituality, mm-hmm. I guess you always want to make sure that it's, um, you know, they're doing it justice. And yeah. the first thing we were looking for on the campaign is whether there were cultural consultants involved um, with the, the, yeah, kind yeah. of to um, make sure that the theme was uh, represented appropriately. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it wasn't that obvious on the campaign. I wish it was more obvious on the yeah. campaign. So we did end up hitting the website um, of the publisher and reading that there were cultural consultants indeed involved, but mm. it would be great to learn more about the backgrounds of yeah. those cultural consultants and, and understanding like how, how they changed the what game. Their influence or, was, yeah. What their influence was almost on like the game. learning a little bit about the yeah. process as part of it. Cause otherwise it's just kind of like, I think now we're getting to the point where we are understanding from a, you know, uh, making sure that we're not, appropriating a culture and just using it for our own sort of spin and benefit and so there's this sort of concept of yeah we need to have cultural consultants Mm. but i i feel like now we've gotten to the point where like well that's just a token tick the box is not Mm. enough like yeah like please do it but also definitely do it i want to know more i want to know and i I want to know about like the the little subtle changes that were made and understanding how i guess how all the pieces of the story come together in a way that is truly authentic and and yeah i'm interested to read that please include that when you see the list like all the photos of the people involved i want to see the the photo of the cult, the cultural consultant i want to see like you know i want to learn about them i want to know um because it's sort of part of it otherwise it's like i could be anyone that you yeah like it it could be just someone that happens to be from that culture that you're like hey does that does this seem okay to you it's like yeah that's fine it's like ah, okay take that box yeah and it's like so it's it's almost and not so much from an accountability but just from a genuine if we're going to if we're going to showcase a culture Let's really showcase it. Mm. Like, this is a great and to elevate those people too, yeah. because they should have more yeah. opportunities in the board game space. Yeah. So this is more of an opportunity, not yes. a criticism, a fr- fr- flat out from the no. From and I really campaign. no, yeah. I'm really happy that they did include yeah. cultural consultants. Yeah, yeah. So um, we but, yeah. yeah. Sorry, no, you're gonna say. No, we go. Oh, <laughs> so I was gonna say no. I was gonna just t- start talking about the weird game. Pause in the video. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, I'm just 
I, I was just going to start talking about the games, but I don't know if there was anything else. No, there. no, I want to yeah. talk about the games. All right. So with the, the games, I guess the first thing is the artwork is stunning for yeah. both of them. It's just really, really beautiful. The components also look um, amazing. They both have a very similar, like thematically, they're both about stars. So with Solani, mm -hmm. um, it's about like star constellations. Mm -hmm. um, and with the girl who made the stars, it's sort of this beautiful mythology uh, story of the uh, a, a little girl who kind of throws these these burning ashes into the black sky and creates the Milky Way that mm -hmm. then sort of provides the light for the their tribe and the, their people to be able to safely go out hunting or gathering their food and their resources and come back home safely. So that's beautiful from that point. Yeah, the video is amazing, by the yeah. way, for, for retelling those stories. Yeah. It's just... Um, yeah, like to get a quick understanding of the theme. Yeah, I think probably not the games. I will say no, the video speaks more, much more to the theme, which is strange because then the games themselves look quite abstract, very abstract. <laughs> so it's kind of like hmm, this is misleading. This is a bit of a bait and switch. It is a bait um, and switch because yeah. the cover art is stunning as well. And so you yeah. look at it and you're like, yes. And then you get to it, you're like, oh, you're like that's oh. more abstract than I expected. <laughs> yeah. um, but the the component tree looks really mm. impressive. Um, Solani in particular. The tiles, because uh, it's tile placement, but the, the tiles, the intersecting parts of the tiles, mm. like and how it all kind of fits together as a puzzle, I yeah. think that looks really cool. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really impressed with what they've done with the tiles yeah. there. Um, actually, they both have an element of tile laying or mm -hmm. tile placement, yeah. but um, the girl who made the stars is worker placement, which yeah. obviously intrigues us more. Yes. I, I kind of wish in the campaign I didn't get a great sense for how they play yeah. out, and it's kind of like what we were talking about before two games in one in this case they both feel like bigger games in their own right and so trying to get our head mm. trying to get my head across how they're similar or different particularly with the theme that was quite similar in a way yes. about the stars um it is uh, the first two games in a four game series right. as well so they're um i find that you know, mm. really interesting i like to see you know a set of games is quite cool that follow a yeah. thematic thread mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I just, I wasn't quite sure. It's probably a bit lower in our rankings just because of the abstract nature yeah. of the game for you. Mm. Um, for me, I wasn't able to get a strong sense of the gameplay, mm -hmm. but I'm still intrigued. We have backed it. So, mm -hmm. um, we'll see if we keep that, but for now we have, we have backed it. Mm -hmm. And that's our number six, Solani and the girl who made the stars. Our number five is a game called... Floriferous. Floriferous. Yes, it's another challenging word. Um, but It's yeah. hard to say, but easy to look at because the artwork it's beautiful, is yeah. stunning. And hopefully fun game. to play, but we don't know yet. We don't know yet, we haven't played it. Played it. Yes. But it's by Pencil First Games. Mm -hmm. And Steve Finn is one of the designers yeah. and like just keeps <laughs> popping up everywhere <laughs> yeah. all over our channel. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I admire whenever like Steve Finn is involved is like all the games that he produces the mechanics are always very different and mm. they always have something really interesting about them. So that immediately kind of makes me go, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, let's let's check it out. And the combined with Pencil First Games as well, mm -hmm. who just um, delivered uh, What Not Cabinet, which we covered yeah. off in Small Talk and that was really well produced. And yes. um, again, another great game by Steve Finn. Mm -hmm. So he's on and, a roll. And the artwork looks beautiful and it looks it looks like a game that's going to be very pleasant. Like it's, it's not going to be a stressful experience. It's going to be a really... Yeah, really nice, beautiful yeah. experience. Yeah, and as soon as I saw this, and I'm sure a lot of people thought this, my mum loves gardening, yeah. loves flowers, loves taking photos of flowers, and I immediately yeah. thought of her for mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a basic, I think, set collection mm -hmm. game, um, card game, and so it's probably a little on the simpler side yeah. and probably too simple for us to play, but more if you're interested in like a family weight game or a game to introduce uh, family members to yeah. board gaming, it looks like a perfect game for that. Yeah. Um, for us, we actually haven't backed this one, and that's because with combined with the shipping, the mm. shipping was quite expensive, like combined with the game uh ends up being you know quite expensive and yeah. so it's one of those games where i think we'll just wait till retail like yeah. we're interested to play it but for i was keen to back it as a present for your mom yeah yeah but, but i think there's like, it's a lot almost no not as much benefit to backing mm. it when it's just about you know getting it a little bit earlier when the game is not for us yeah <laughs> so, yeah, yeah i agree yeah so yeah. we probably pick this one up in retail but that is number five floriferous mm. Floriferous. Nice. Number four. Our number four is a game called Ghost Rider. This one came out of nowhere. Mm. Like I didn't know this was coming. And then when we when we saw it launch, we were like, hmm, 
hmm, let's what check this, this out. What is this? Yeah. And a pleasant little surprise. I mean, yeah. it's our number four of the yeah. the fortnight. The fortnight. The mm. last two weeks. Yeah. I, always, I always feel like I have to say that fortnight means last two weeks. Yeah, maybe everybody just it. uses fortnight now. And, I yeah, don't maybe. Know. Maybe. Anyway. Um, so but, Ghost Rider is a party game or a party style game, but it's a word game. So if you like games like... Um, code names or Mysterium, then I think you would be really interested to find out more about mm. this game. I will say one of the lead designers is uh, Mary Flanagan, who um, I believe is quite, is her publishing company as yeah, well, yeah. Um, but also, you know, very prolific. There's yeah. been a lot of yeah games design, but, but also yeah. female designer. So mm-hmm. um, that is one thing that I'll put out there first is like, yeah. of course we will check this out, but we were really, I was really intrigued by the mechanics of this game because Mm -hmm. what it is, is you're trying to get your teammates. So there are two teams and you're trying to get your teammates to guess the object that you have, um, you have seen on a card. But the trick is, can I just interject the, the thematically? Cause what's happening thematically is your two teams. Why can't I ever lead with mechanics? (laughs) Why does theme always get to go first? Well, cause it makes it make sense. Exactly. Setting the scene. Your two teams of mediums. And so you're trying to channel what the ghost is trying to tell you. So the ghost is the person that's seen and kind of knows the card or knows the object. And then you as the team of mediums are trying to kind of guess with as few clues as possible. Oh, no, you're going to mechanic sound. This is not thematic. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. So that's not teams thematic of mediums, at all. the ghost is the one that has the information. <laughs> now you go. <laughs> Over to you. This is basically an insight into our life. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But anyway, with the mechanics, we'll get back to that. What I love about it is that both teams are working on the same object. Mm. Both ghosts have the same object and they're trying to communicate what that is to their teams. The teams are giving them separate questions and they are writing the answer to that question letter by letter. And when the team... Um, thinks that they know what that clue is, they're going to have to stop them immediately. I'm saying silencio. Silencio. <laughs> silencio. And like, when they say... Silence in Spanish. Yeah, and when they say silencio, the ghost stops writing mm-hmm. and then that forms one of their clues so that they can deduce what the object is by the combination of those clues. If their teammates let them get too far into that word, mm-hmm. the word will become obvious and then the other team is going to have an additional clue to help them mm-hmm. guess what the object is. And yeah. I just think that is such a clever concept. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. It's I'm very clever. very curious about yeah. seeing it or experiencing it, bit play it, yeah. playing out. Yeah. And so definitely we are backing this game. Um, it was like really, I thought it was well-priced as well. Um, so yeah, keen to get our hands on that. Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's kind of, been slowly backed but if you're into this type of game please go and check it out because Mm. it does look like an interesting twist on those familiar kind of mechanics indeed so that's our number four ghost rider number Number three number three top three fjords number three is fjords um this was an this is an older game actually i think Mm. yeah 2005 this game Mm. came out um and unfortunately the designer um franz beno delonge um has passed away and this is a reprint and um kind of uh, evolution of the game so there are, have been a few things that have changed is my understanding or mm-hmm. like expanded upon um, by Phil Walker Harding mm-hmm. of course shout out for an Australian designer yeah. um, all of the Sushi Go series and lots, lots and lots and lots of games um, so I'm excited about the like slight t- tweaks that he might have made to it mm. combined with Beth Sobel art mm, yeah I mean that's a pretty compelling proposition yes yes yeah, it's gonna be beautiful beautiful to look at beautiful ex- table experience I think uh, and mm. also just the nature of what you're looking at because of the fjords and you're kind of creating that landscape or exploring. Yeah. I, I love that element. So you are, uh, and the game takes place in two parts. So the first mm-hmm. part, you're laying the tiles, creating that landscape. The second part, you're building and um, adding to that landscape in kind of like an area control game. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks very much like Carcassonne. It's been compared to Carcassonne a lot, which is a game that we, you know, have played a lot of. It was one of those gateway yeah. games that we have really enjoyed. Um, but but this one apparently plays a lot better at two players. So mm. I'm intrigued by that. And um, I definitely, I just think the box art is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we, our friends enjoy tile placement. Yeah. So yeah, that and is. it looks like it's going to be a really pleasant, just yeah. like, yeah, chill Calming, experience. Yeah, floating through the fjords. Mm, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's just taking me away right now. Just even talking about it. <laughs> Are you trying to get away? <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> when life gets really busy, it's like, Oh, happy place. Oh, okay. well, it was about and me. No, it's not about I won't me. take that person. Um, 
But the other thing is that we have backed, well, I have backed the more deluxe version of the game, which is um, the Jal, Yal, Jal, Yal. I don't know how to pronounce I mean, that. I will butcher that if uh, I try. Yeah. But I, at the moment, I don't see a huge value actually in the that deluxe mm. um, deluxification. So I'm waiting to see what gets unlocked. And I may drop my um, back down. But definitely, either way, we'll be getting this mm. game. And let's be honest, I'll probably stick with the deluxified version. <laughs> um, so number that was our number three, number three fjords. fjords. Our number two is... <gasps> Robinson Crusoe Collector's Edition. Which is on Game Found, not Kickstarter, yeah, if you're yeah. looking for it. So we actually even have it just back there. Robinson Crusoe. Oh, yeah. um, it's a game that I, I... It's one of those games I really love that game. Amy's not into co-op. Uh, I was like, I feel like you played it with me once. And you're like, I think you just told me a little bit about it. While I entertained while, it for While I was playing. And then she's like, yeah, nah. Um, but I, I love it. And I, I remember just like, I don't play it enough. It's like, it's one of those games that I'm always like, oh, I just want to get it out on the table. And there's just never enough time. Um, one of the tricky things, if you've ever played Robinson Crusoe, you would know, it's just incredibly difficult. As soon as you start kind of escalating through the different scenarios, it's so tough. Mm. So what I love is that this collector's edition, I think there's several things that are coming out with this. Mm -hmm. One is all the minis mm -hmm. that look amazing. The minis do Amy. look amazing. I mean, yeah. my rating of this was six and Maggie's was nine. So, you know, my <laughs> opinion is not going to matter as much here. But the definitely the minis, the minis look, look incredibly detailed. And I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. I think it's because yeah. it's Awakened Realms. Yeah. Um, but uh, what I'm more excited about is the, the book of, of campaigns. So you have this book that guides you through all these scenarios, unique scenarios yeah. and campaigns. Um, yes, yeah, scenarios, I should say. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's going to help you with the different levels of difficulty. So it'll make me feel less bad when, you know, there, there should be some some scenarios in there or some storylines in there that I'm going to be able to get through and have a satisfying experience by the end of it that I didn't die miserably and horribly um, <laughs> when I was trying to survive. I thought yeah. like as a campaign, this was really interesting because it was hard for me to understand what it was giving you above and beyond the base game. Mm. Like in some ways you see the minis and you're like, Oh great minis. Yeah. But then it's like the deluxe edition. I almost, I wish they'd brought the expansions in and made it like a big box set because mm. the expansions are still add ons that you have right. to add in. And mm. then the scenario book is kind of separate to that too. So it was a bit hard to unpick what was yeah. going on there. And like, for us already owning the, the second game. edition or third yeah, edition, of the, edition yeah. whatever it is, the more edition, modern yeah. edition of the board game, trying to work out like what we had and what we didn't was yeah. a bit, bit difficult. Um, so yeah, I think that lowered my excitement level a, li a yeah. little bit. Cause I just want to have every, I would rather sell this base version and have everything in one box right. um, for you, you know, the expansions yeah. and the booklet and everything. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I can see why you would be interested in the scenario. So actually, like trying to work out what level we we mm. back this at, we have not backed this yet because we're trying to work out what we should get. Yeah, because I, I really just want the book. Like, yeah, you really just want the book. And I really that... just want the minis. So it's like, yeah, by pretty... the time you get book and minis, you might as well kind of get yeah 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 everything um but the the book itself is like it works out to be about 50 australian dollars which is quite a lot Plus for shipping a, on top quite a lot for a scenario yeah book. yeah yeah i kind of try and justify it to myself as this should make this should expand the existing game and yeah. give me hours and hours and hours of fun yeah so because when i was doing a book it yeah, would be expensive it is expensive for just the book and shipping to australia yeah um because when i was out i'm like we could get a whole nother game for this amount yeah. of money are you sure yeah. that you want this book but then i was like yeah but technically if this book works well this should mean that this game becomes like hours of entertainment yeah five to ten games in one mm -hmm. in terms of the experience of variety Variety, potentially potentially yeah i mean it's just as bad as me saying i want the minis and them sitting there unpainted forever yeah so and how many of those do we have that's far too many far too many that's not true. anyway that's our number two robinson crusoe the collector's edition yeah. on game found not kickstarter links are all below our final number one number yeah. one is factory funner bear raid and the ghosts of Christmas. This is another three games Another in one three campaign. games in one. But I'm yeah. so excited for these three games in one because it's by BoardGameTables.com mm. and they, their publi publishing history, like the games that I get from them, I feel like they're always really like top notch. Yeah, like quality. they put a lot of detail in it, like quantitative easing or QE mm -hmm. was such a beautifully thick cardboard. Yeah. Really nice. We've got um, Loot of Lima 
is another mm-hmm. one that we have from them. We have their board game bags. Oh, oh my God. They get so much use. We use like... them every week. <laughs> yeah. We use them every week without fail, yeah. taking games to other people's houses. Yeah. Um, we love those bags. Yeah. But anyway, this is not about the bags, although you can <laughs> add the bags to your pledge. So I feel like I've just done a marketing. Yeah, there you anyway. go. Just bags are fabulous, everybody. Uh, yeah. But we ha- we are backing all three of these mm-hmm. games. So um, let's talk about them one by one. The f- okay. One of them is Factory Funner, mm-hmm. which is an older game. Let me find the publishing when it was. It was 2016. Okay. Yeah. 2016 game. And when it came out at the time, the artwork has all been redone. The artwork looks great. The like artwork it's very on all three. Fun and engaging. Yeah, the artwork on all three. And like yeah, this one's spot kinda... on. Yeah. Like I could not be more excited. I, like I would just back them because of the artwork. Wow. I know, but they, <laughs> they just look really fun and they modern. Do. Yes. And, and that's going to help when I, you know, take them to work and people mm-hmm. get drawn in by the art. And then I like, ha ha, there's a lot of game here, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> but Factory Fun actually got really great reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of those reviews that are actually on the campaign. So it was great to see um, other reviewers who, yeah. who really enjoy those games. What I like is you're, um, the sense that I get is you're kind of building these kind of connections and then putting these uh, machines mm-hmm. um, as part of them. But there's an element of real time speed of, of trying to kind of grab from a finite pool of machines. And so because of the rushing to get those things, you might end up getting a machine that is not the best for yeah. you. Or so it's like that trade off of whether yeah. do you grab it quickly and hope that you're and getting less one, or do you wait but and everyone else has taken all the good ones. Yeah. And yeah. And I usually like those games because one of the things that the in the the way that we are different when we play is I usually, I'm more of an instinctive, like I'll go with my gut and I'll be trying to play quickly. Mm-hmm. Amy is more of like, well, she's a thinker. She's like kind of stops and reflects and it's like trying to optimize. So I'll often get frustrated if she's taking too long with the turn. I'm like, come on. And then if I lose, but because she's like taking her time and optimizing things, so I'm like, oh, there should be some kind of reward for <laughs> thinking fast. So I always have the hope that in a game like this, it'll be like my redemption. I'll finally be able to like use my fast instinct kind of yeah and that will really frustrate me having to make a quick decision but i'm really interested to play the art and what they've done i think they've even changed the shape of the tiles but um it looks really cool and i'm excited about that one the next one is bear raid by ryan courtney actually which is the most exciting party for me because even though we haven't got to them yet Mm. pipeline and um the smaller version of pipeline which is curious cargo Cargo, thank you um the two two player game they just look so heavy they've had such like wide widely positive reviews yeah um so i'm interested to see what he's done with this little game this was stock stock market related and i'm quite partial to wanting to understand the stock market Mm -hmm. um so i am intrigued by this because they have the bear bear and bull markets based on whether they're going up or down so in this one you are yeah you are all trying to is it manipulate the the stocks and try to like yeah but in a really cutesy um, and it's, I think it's shorts, placing shorts on stocks. Yeah, um, which is when which you're is betting what, for it to go in, betting on the stock going down. Yeah, yeah which is price. like what a bear raid is actually, right. apparently. I only learned that from the name of the game. Yeah. So <laughs> that is a bear raid. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm intrigued by it. There are some elements. I think there's like hidden screens and yes. stuff, which isn't really my favorite thing, if I'm honest. Mm, yeah, um, it's kind of like bidding or reverse bidding type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. That, that hidden, hidden And I think element. you like share market themes more than I do mm. but I'm still intrigued to give it a go and the mm. artwork is really cute and fun yeah. as well and you kind of need that for a share trading game to yeah. get to make it uh, yeah to yeah. trick people into playing with you <laughs> um and then the other final game is Ghost of Christmas and mm-hmm. thematically this is the one that spoke to me the most mm-hmm. I I just I kind of love the story of the ghosts of past present Christmas future. Carol yeah. yeah yeah and um and the artwork is so yeah, cool yeah, the, the illustration is, is really cool yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. the fact that you've got the little wreaths as like one <laughs> yeah, of the, the tokens Christmas, yeah. and the yeah. Christmas wreaths 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 <laughs> Christmas wreaths I'm having a lot of trouble today with pronouncing things words <laughs> language speaking English <laughs> Ghost of Christmas is uh it just looks really fun it's yeah. yeah I'm intrigued by the fact that you are placing it's a trick-taking game and you're playing cards down mm-hmm. and when you play them you've got to play them into the past present or future mm-hmm. like there's three different tricks or something going on yeah um but that really intrigues yeah. me I you know we haven't typically had much experience with trick-taking games we um, play teach you we have been playing the crew mm-hmm. online 
um, if you've been watching those live streams. Yes. And that has really kind of made me more interested in trick-taking yeah. games. And yeah. so that's why I think I was most compelled by this game. Yeah, usually my, my challenge with trick-taking is it, it tends to be quite abstract. It's just like numbers and that mm. sort of stuff. I really enjoyed with the crew that there's that co-op element that makes it... What's well, co-op? Completely co-op. Com- entirely co-op. <laughs> yeah. But it's... In, and often in trick-taking games, you can have those like two... like um because it's the same with t2 like you can mm. have kind of two teams so you're mm. playing with a team member and so it's kind of like semi-co-op but still competitive yeah um but it's still very abstract i enjoy that this is adding a flair of theme to they're trying very hard with the yeah. theme yeah. yeah and the little dials i don't even know what they do but they look cute um yeah. i should say that we have backed all three of mm-hmm. these games and there is an option to have the deluxe component and i took it um classic <laughs> but i've got to say that the bear raid and the ghosts of christmas um deluxe component deluxe components were not particularly interesting to me i do like the christmas wreaths, the wreaths yeah. um being like wood they mm-hmm. look cool um but i particularly love the wooden insert that's gonna be put into factory funner because mm-hmm. anytime you've got a tile laying game it's really nice to have an insert to keep everything organized so that is why i've gone in on deluxification mm-hmm. looking forward to what they unlock with stretch goals nice. um, but that is our number one yeah factory funner bear raid and ghosts of christmas Now, if you're still watching at this point, (laughs) as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you missed it, we are going to continue recording this video um, and that will be available on our channel membership page. We have a community page going. When you do join our channel, it directly helps support um, us doing what we're doing, creating this content. content. Um, And we try to give back by engaging on our community page, which is full of wonderful people. Mm. So if you're just looking for some great people, it is like, I already think that we have the best (laughs) group of subscribers (laughs) on the internet internet yeah. um but but our channel membership now has a very a smaller tighter group of like just really engaging and engaged mm. people and we couldn't be more appreciative if yeah. you are one of those people thank you so much um for supporting the mm. channel and um keeping us very entertained with our yes. with all of the chit chat that goes on in there yeah but otherwise um thank you for watching um please hit subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you in another two weeks for more ways to spend your money <laughs> but bye for now bye.